Hey Top Senders, Rotsu Kiwi here. Today I'd like to talk about the improvements made to competitive video gaming in X and Y. So first let's start off with Super Training. Super Training in my opinion is an absolute godsend. It takes EV training, which would normally have taken hours if not days to actually complete, depending on how much time you have for you to actually invest into EV training and makes it into something you can do within hours. I mean seriously, it's now got to the point where within two or three hours you can take a freshly hacked Pokemon and have it fully EV trained and already have it gaining in enough levels to become on its own a formidable force. This itself has been an absolute godsend. It's a huge time saver and Quite frankly, anyone who wants to go into competitive battling does it's effectively had days trimmed from the preparation of each of their Pokemon. Another improvement that's been brought forward in X and Y, a function that has made gaining access to perfect IVs incredibly, incredibly simple. For those who aren't already aware, friends of Fiery Pokemon are guaranteed to have two perfect IVs. They're not in given stats, they're just as random as any other IVs, except you guarantee two IV stats of 31. Now, for somebody who used to breed back in, say, Gen 4, like myself, this is huge. I mean, to me it's kind of annoying because I would spend days, if not weeks, trying to read for a Pokemon with the right nature, the right ability, and two good IVs. Now they're effectively saying, here you go, have it, it's yours, it is a... It's just that simple, and yeah, I'm a little annoyed because it makes everything I did in the past pointless. But. That being said, it's accessibility. Being able to guarantee perfect IVs on certain Pokemon is going to make breeding just that much more simple. Not only does Friends Safari offer you simpler breeding, but it also offers you access to Pokemon's hidden abilities. So you no longer have to align functions such as Dream World to get your hidden ability. If you're on the Friends Safari and the person and the friend who has given you that Safari is online, the Pokemon you catch there will stand a better chance of having that hidden ability. And for a lot of Pokemon, that is what makes them competitive. A lot of Pokemon have gone from being okay with their natural abilities to having hidden abilities that basically make them, let's just say, more than slightly competitive. Now, as I said, this is basically the case of the Pokemon companies turned around and said, oh, those two IV Pokemon you should breed for, now you can just catch them in a while. Now, I've made mention of breeding in this episode. What changes have the Pokemon company actually made to breeding? Well, there are three main differences that have been brought forward. Firstly, the aforementioned hidden abilities now they are much easier to breed forward. Back in Generation 5 when they first introduced hidden abilities, if you wanted to pass the hidden ability on to a new generation of Pokemon, you would need to you would need the mother to have the hidden ability. They've now changed that. It's not only the mother that requires the hidden ability to pass it on. Either gender can do it. As long as the mother or the father has the hidden ability, it stands a chance of being passed forward. The same change has been applied to egg moves. Moves that used to be passed down from a father onto its offspring are now capable of being passed from a mother as well. So the gender exclusivity of hidden abilities and egg moves has effectively been removed. Both parents can pass on here, but both parents can pass on a hidden ability, and both parents can now pass on head modes. 
Another improvement to breathing has actually been the method of transferring IVs from parents onto their children. Introduced in Generation 6, we, know, or we are now able to use the put held item Destiny Knot as a breathing item as well. For those who aren't aware, Destiny Knot, when equipped to one of the parents who's been breeding, will guarantee that five out of the child's six IVs will be passed on from either of the parents. Meaning that you could get attack and special attack from the father, and then hit points to speed and special defense from the mother, or vice versa, or any combination of their actual stat spikes. Now this might not sound too amazing because we already have the power items for transferring IVs from one parent to another, which allowed you to transfer a given IV from a parent onto a child Pokemon. Now, this was fine if you were aiming for one or two IVs. See, you had a mother Pokemon that had a special attack IV you wanted to pass on, and a father Pokemon with the speed. All you had to do was equip the correct power item to each of those parents, and you'd be able to start transferring the cards. Now, I'm a little still on old school breeding, but I believe that if you attach the power item to both Pokemon, you are guaranteed one and have a 50% chance of the other. But by doing this, you also forfeited the ability to use Everstone on your book or one of the parents to guarantee your child book on what have a selected nature. Destiny allows you to avoid this by attempting to transfer given IVs from both parents while allowing one parent to still hold an item such as the Everstone. Destiny Notch change also means that we can make better use of the Pokemon over in Friend Safari. If you get two Pokemon from Friend Safari of opposite genders that have two different sets of perfect IVs, Say one's attack and defense, the other one's a special attack and special defense, and you want both of and you want all four of those IVs on one Pokemon, using the Destiny Art, you stand a chance of transferring all four of those IVs. And again, you could only transfer two, but the chance that all four is there. This has led to some amazing breeding chains though. With increased chance of guaranteeing IVs coming from one Pokemon or the other, if you have two Pokemon with two perfect IVs, the chances of breeding those two together and getting the Pokemon with those four perfect IVs are pretty slim. But it's a lot more likely you will get a Pokemon that has three of those IVs. And as soon as you get a Pokemon with three of those IVs, you simply trade out one of the two IV parents and put the three IV Pokemon in its place. Effectively meaning that you increase the chances of getting your four IV Pokemon. By chaining and recombining your perfect ID Pokemon correctly, it is actually possible and actually a lot more likely to gain Pokemon that have five and in some very rare cases six perfect IVs. There is one thing that has increased accuracy breeding that is actually helping the entire community though. And that's the introduction of Wonder Trade. Wonder Trade allows you to randomly trade a Pokemon that you own for another Pokemon somewhere else in the world. Now, when this was first announced, a lot of people thought, oh, this is going to be absolutely amazing. I can just get a whole bunch of scatterbugs, put them on there, and I'll get a load of amazing Pokemon back from it. And most likely there was that somewhere along the line. But now we don't seem to be getting a lot of scatterbugs over on Wonder Trade. We seem to be getting a lot of four IV Pokemon. Now the only thing reason I can think of this is people are trying to breed for their perfect five IV competitive Pokemon. By doing this, so we're going to have a lot, and I mean a lot, of spare Pokemon. A lot of Pokemon that have three or four IVs, or might have five IVs, but somehow they've lost the nature or a certain enemy. Now, if you've spent hours 
if not days, in reading your Pokémon. It would be a shame to take a Pokémon that's got four IVs and just release it into the wild, just get rid of it. It's a huge waste. What you could do is you could take that four IV Pokémon and ship it out onto Wonder Tree. That way, you end up trading off a 4 ID Pokemon to get something random back. Potentially another 4 ID Pokemon. And the potential to get that 4 ID Pokemon is a lot higher than most people would think. I've heard about people trading off their 4 ID Pokemon and getting 4 ID Pokemon back. In fact, sometimes they've actually been the case of they've traded out their 4 ID Pokemon and they've got another exact one back. Not got the same, not got theirs back, but they've got another 4 ID Pokemon back of the same species. And this is actually the amazing thing about it. By going to these perfect Pokemon, by Pokemon giving us easy access to being able to read the perfect Pokemon, we get a lot of people utilising Wonder Trade and actually trading good Pokemon. Not because they want something good bad, but just because they don't want to waste their hard work. Well, to be honest, that's all well and good. I actually think that's the best way to do it. Why try and scam people by sending it nothing but scatterbugs? If everyone did that, then Wonder Trade would be nothing but nothing but scatterbugs. But now we've got people saying, well, I've got all these four IV Pokemon that are no use to me. I'll ship those out instead. And, to be fair, it's working. There are a lot of four ID, there are a lot of four ID Pokemon over on Wonder Trade waiting to be snatched up. So yeah, I think a lot of the changes that the Pokemon Company has put into both training, raising, and breeding Pokemon have been, I should say, slightly beneficial. But with all that said, what do you guys think? As always, let me know down below. And until next time, I've been Rata Joey. You guys are the top percent. Peace.